This is the FM Gold channel of All India Radio. In the program News Analysis, now we bring you an interview with Professor Ashutosh Sharma, Secretary, Department of Science and Technology. Interviewer is Pallav Bagla, journalist. In a major announcement, the Union Cabinet cleared a national mission on cyber physical security. What is cyber physical security? How will you and me be secure? How will India be secure? And what is the future for youngsters on cyber physical security? And what is the kind of job prospects? Dr. Ashutosh Sharma, tell us a little bit about what is cyber physical security and why should anybody care about it? I will explain in very simple terms. You see, first of all, cyber physical is a convergence. It is integration of many different things that we do today, but we do them in isolation. Now we bring them together as a package, uh, make it much more effective for the jobs of the future as well as jobs today. It's impacting everything. It's disruptive and it's going to be all of the future of the entire mankind in foreseeable future as well as in remote future. So cyber physical is about convergence. What is the convergence or integration? See, there is communication or next generation communication, which is stable, which is reliable, which is fast, starting from 5G onwards. So there is communication, there is computation, and there is a flow of data and information all the time. Now, based on this data, information, communication, you can do computation for making decisions. So just like human beings do, we collect data and then we make an informed decision. Now, a human being cannot handle large amount of data. So where do I want to make my next hospital? I need to look at the distribution of population. I should look at the educational levels. I should look at the manpower availability. I should look at connectivity, roads, everything. So this kind of decision, which is based on big data, it can be done much better by machines. So once we get the data, we have communication going, you can do computation and make decision. This decision-making process, like the humans do, is called artificial intelligence. So it's a convergence of uh, computation, communication, artificial intelligence or decision-making. But at the same time, you also have to act on that decision. For example, if you have a driverless car, which is a very good example of a cyber physical system. A driverless car has a lot of sensors, so there is also perception. Uh, perception, it collects information about who is walking where, what are the obstacles, what is speed I should go. So after making a decision in real time, it has to act on that decision. So cyber physical system is a convergence of digital information on one hand and a physical machine or mechanism on the other hand. How does it differ from cyber security? So cyber security is about securing the cyber space, but there is also a parallel notion of securing the infrastructure which is physical. Now yeah, think you have about the army your, and you have everybody. Uh, that is the kind of physical yeah, infrastructure. Not just that railways, there are powerhouses, there are transport systems, there is everything in the future is governed by computer controls. So it is about securing the infrastructure. You see, in the future, physical wars with tanks, etc. may be more limited. But what is more immediate, what is more alarming, is that uh, the wars could be fought on controlling the infrastructure. Now this infrastructure can be controlled if we have a control over the cyber information systems, computers that control all of this uh, movement, for example, of trains. So securing physical infrastructure is part of cyber physical systems. It can be a powerhouse, every infrastructure. So yeah. if I understood correctly, meaning this is well beyond just cyber security and physical security. This yes. encompasses both cyber mm -hmm. physical security and also yes. how you deploy the entire infrastructure which is in a way linked to the digital ecosystem. Correct, because infrastructure has embedded cyber elements in it, which means that cyber and physical work together. Anything which is being controlled by information, by cyber elements, is always uh, threatened by a cyber attack. So is beyond cyber security. It is a security not just of information, but it is security of the physical world in which we live. 
which so, is controlled. So, how much money has the cabinet given and for how many years and what is the plan you have for this cyber physical yes. uh, mission? So, certainly I must first point out that this is of uh, probably the topmost concern today of all the countries. There is a breakneck speed in moving ahead on cyber physical systems. Our Prime Minister Modi ji, he announced in the last Science Congress in 2017 that India must launch a major mission related to cyber physical systems to secure our future as well as to look at the new opportunities in line with the needs of the country. So I would come to that point which is very important is what are the needs of India and what are the new opportunities that this mission brings. So before that we we'll say look how much is the budget. The budget is uh, 3,660 crores over a period of five years. That's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Other countries are putting equal or more and uh, it's not about money. It's about creating new opportunities using this money. This would actually set up a foundational layer of cyber physical systems in the country, which in fact there would be uh, more missions that different ministries could start based on that foundational layer. So it is an interministerial effort? It is an interministerial effort. It brings together all the stakeholders. It brings together academia, R&D labs of the country, all the different ministries, as well as industry, not just in IT space, but also industries which cater to sectors such as agriculture, health, education, transport, water networks, you name it. So there are huge opportunities in all of these areas for applying the knowledge of cyber physical systems. So why is the Department of Science and Technology and the Ministry of Science and Technology, the nodal ministry, why not the Ministry of Electronics? Because that seems a more appropriate hub for this. Certainly, Ministry of Information Technology is doing many activities in this area. They have opened IoT labs in the country at several places. Uh, Niti Aayog has made a policy document, very effective policy document related to artificial intelligence. So, I would just bring you back to actually what a cyber physical system is and why science and technology yes, is yes. appropriate for it. Cyber physical is not only IT. IT is algorithms. IT is data and on the other hand you have smart materials, you have sensors, you have actuators, robotics, industry 4.0 which is actually physical machines. So cyber physical system is a convergence of man, material, mechanics, mechanisms as well as machines. It has its interdisciplinary cyber physical systems, meaning chemistry goes into it, physics goes into it, engineering goes into it, material science goes into it, and then algorithms also go into it. It's an integration of all of them. So, so ideally placed with scientists. It is encompasses the entire ecosystem of science and technology, not focused only on one sector, not focused only on one tool of knowledge. It integrates all the tools, at the same time it integrates all the applications. And we have kept that in mind in proposing that there would be 25 hubs. Now these 25 hubs are divided into three categories. The 15 hubs are related to the basic tools of cyber physical systems. For example, deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence, sensors, actuators, robotics, manufacturing and so on. These are the horizontals of knowledge in cyber physical system. Then we have six hubs which focus on different sectors where the applications are. So these sectors are agriculture, health, education, transport and so on. And then there are four hubs which are more into commercializing the technologies which are produced here. So they are research parks. So it's a tight integration of the tools of the trade as well as the applications. And there's another very unique feature of this mission. Each hub is actually completely responsible for that particular area in the entire country. So in fact, you can think of a hub as a mini ministry. What that means is, to give you an example, if we have a hub on machine learning, now, this hub is responsible for aggregating all the knowledge about machine learning across the country. It is not only responsible for its own scientists. So, no matter what the physical location is, they have to be custodian and aggregator of all the knowledge in that particular area. And they have to give out the different projects in that particular area. They have to work with the industry. They have to work with the relevant ministries and deliver. Now, each hub is tightly integrated in it does basic research, 
it produces knowledge which is relevant but it also develops technologies based on that knowledge and it also takes those technologies to incubation so there is in fact an incubator with each hub so there is a end to end science ecosystem in one place so how many other countries have mission or a project on cyber physical security and who are the leaders countries that are advanced in technology all of them are going hammer and tong at it but we are not late comers in it so we started at the right time we have not missed the boat and given our human resources very good deep scientific expertise and human resources that we have we can make very rapid progress in this area also we have expertise in information technology absolutely. and large number of software experts absolutely and so that's the expertise that this mission would leverage expertise in every area of science and technology wherever it exists in the country and even abroad so there would be a very good strong global connect with all the top scientists who are working in this area to understand where things are moving for an average person what would be the one two or three immediate benefits so first thing we want to remember is that india has a great advantage which is called demographic dividend which means lot of young people who are educated intelligent people searching for opportunities now other countries for example which are developing cyber physical systems they do not have this advantage so they have an aging population now the way they can grow in the future is through using deploying intelligent machines our problem our goals are exactly opposite of those countries so this mission directly addresses that point he's saying look while science may be global even some of the technologies are global we must not just blindly copy them and import them but we must develop our application ecosystem and saying these are our needs and using this kind of technology how do we address them to give you an example we may not have number of doctors in the country which are required to completely service our population let's look at radiologists now you may have an x ray you may have an mri scan but somebody has to look at it spend time on it and do diagnosis cyber physical systems artificial intelligence deep machine learning can do this kind of diagnosis with 99% certainty in fraction of a second and it can be done remotely so it is not necessary for the patient actually be to get an appointment with the doctor and be sitting in the office all the time many many people still think health and medicine is still an art not such a science there is certainly art in it and we are not taking away jobs of uh, doctors the point is that in future that we have to rely more on machines to do the those jobs where we do not have people available so that was just an example now if you look at for example judiciary in order to analyze a particular case you may have to pull up records dating back to 30 years and a whole army of actually junior lawyers are required for that now finally it is the knowledge of a human being which counts but while doing the routine jobs for example pulling out all kind of data while looking at all the similar cases that happened in 50 years and analyzing the judgments which actually takes a very large amount of time this could all be done by machines in a fraction of a second this is about the analysis of data which is done either by human beings but in a very slow and efficient way or it could be done by a machine the final decision is always taken by a human being by considering all the pros and cons and saying look how do i uh, look at this data how do i look at the analysis and the decision which has been arrived by that analysis prime minister modi has spoken a lot about innovative india so is there a space for startups in this mission? there is a huge space for startups in fact this is a mission that would be driven mostly largely by very young people you see i don't the leadership of the area is with the youth mostly with people who are below 35 years old so there would be very large number of new opportunities jobs skills which are being produced there and innovation is certainly a very huge opportunity in fact the mission targets producing at least 800 new technology startups based on the knowledge which is generated in this mission there could be lot many more but because we would have an incubator with every hub so which means you are producing you are creating 25 new incubators which focus on the deep knowledge in these areas and translate that into technology and new opportunities thanks it was a pleasure talking to you dr ashutosh my pleasure too thank you you are listening to an interview with professor ashutosh sharma secretary department of science and technology interviewer was pallav bagla journalist 
This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.nic.in. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.